to people. He said, man, you got to have perseverance. You got to have heart. Um, you know, you got to be a game dog. And uh, you got to be willing to, to to die, to die for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, 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 and as I told you, uh, I recall that day as well, there are many people who earn a check, but most people don't understand the difference between earning a check and making money. If you make money, you literally create something that generates money. You know, there's a huge difference. You know, you go to work for corporate America or, you know, you name it. But if someone else is signing your check, you earned a check. If you created yourself, then you made money. And there's a huge difference. And you know, you have you have to understand that. But but you're absolutely right. Uh, and 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 I must say, I got I the the obedience to the universe I, I did get from you. Uh, it may have been last year, in fact. But but you said it, I I filed it away and and never forgot but that uh, I, I forget the particular circumstance in which you were obedient and reached out to me but i had the opportunity to return the favor and be obedient to the universe and and say to you those words but again it goes back to what i was saying in the beginning that that is just me being the voice the vehicle i have no idea what uh you know i couldn't even begin to tell you what i told you that day Right. Because oftentimes it's really it it's really book and this this may sound strange to some people, but it's literally like an out of body experience. Oh, I get because it. I can't I can't repeat to you what I said. Right. You know, and I was I, I've, been, I've I've thought about this. I've I've had that experience many times. Uh, even when I've I've given speeches, uh, you know, and people will I, I, I've I've had the I don't know if it's fortune is the right word, but I've literally made grown men cry. No. Not not in a in a in a pejorative well, negative you know, way, but they were so inspired listening and on the edge of what I was saying. And when I finish, I feel this lifting, if you will, off of me, like like. You know, you see, everybody's seen the movie Ghost, right? Right. And right. and and uh, Patrick Swayze's character in as Whoopi Goldberg, and, right. and then when when he leaves, exits her body, then she's weak. You know, but she feels this. Oh, okay, now I got myself back. Right. But uh, you know, people are like, man, where did that come from? Where did where did you pull that from? Because I often, most times, nine times out of ten, I don't write the speech. I'll make a few notes and then go right. and allow the, the universe to speak through me. And so my point being, I have no idea what I said. I have no idea what I, what I said to you that day, but obviously it resonated and it was for you. It was, it was your purpose. Yeah, I needed that. That was perfect timing. And I think you don't remember what, what you're saying because it's not ego based, it's spiritually based. You're tapping into yeah. your higher self and you're just being obedient. And so once yeah. you're done, you completed your assignment, <laughs> zap, <laughs> you know, yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. So let's, let's kind of touch on that because although we're here to talk about Big Sticks 5, which is coming out tomorrow, dominoes mixed with chips, poker element, nothing like it out there on the market, rolling out tomorrow. We're with CEO Michael Watkins of 1619 Gaming Group. Now you mentioned, uh, well, this stage, I, I'll say this stage is just not about product it's about spirituality and feeding the people some real content you know some real mm -hmm. content that's going to help them you mentioned something very important that a lot of people are confused about uh not the way you you versed it but how to tap into that and that is earning money versus making money is there a mm -hmm. science to that or is it just simply about being creative Again, great question. I, I, I can't say necessarily that it's a science to it. Uh, I think it's really just the will. We oftentimes will come up with an idea. My wife, she, she has invented countless number of things, you know, 
she's oh and and she she takes pride in you know ah, i got a new invention and right. she'll you know pause the tv okay let's listen to what this invention is and then she will will you know spout it out and then my daughter and i will evaluate the concept and and whatnot so but the, but the thing is the reason i say that that happens to all of us all the time we'll see something experience something why can't we change this why can't we do this or or why can't it be like such and again this goes back to lessons early in life that I got from my grandfather, which he told me that, that resonated and, and stuck with me. As you enter Grambling from Highway 20, uh, uh, in Highway, Interstate 20, this, when you enter the city of Grambling, from the exit to uh, the, the very first street right there at New Rocky Valley. Okay very dark. So this was probably back in 1998, 97 ish. And my, I had a conversation with my grandfather about it. And he said, well, if you want something changed, you have to change it. Okay. See, so it sounds very simple, SD. But not many people are willing to go through the steps that it takes to make that come to fruition. Right. So I said, okay. So I wrote a letter to the mayor, wrote a letter to the city, city council, and explained to them and expressed to them, you know, the significance of having a well-lit entry into the city and, and whatnot. And so now it's it's you know, it's no longer dark like that. You know, now I'm not saying that that wasn't in the works before I wrote that letter or whatnot. But the, the point is, he explained that to me at, you know, a young age that, and it, and it resonated with me. And so as we as individuals see different things and find opportunities to, to, to change a paradigm that may seem so very simple, when people, are introduced to the concept of big stakes five. They're like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Well, you know what? You maybe you did at one point, but you right. didn't act on it. Right. We acted on it. Right. Right. You, you said something very important. And I was thinking of this as you were talking, and then you you said it. You said it's no longer, it's no longer dark now. Right. So, so to the people. You can't get light without going through darkness. You got to face the darkness, right? Yes. You got to face Absolutely. the darkness. You have to, and that's that leg work. That's that uh, those those late nights, uh, self doubt, uh, doubt from people uh, maybe in your own household, uh, lack of support. That's the darkness. But most of the darkness comes from self. You you yes. plan, yeah, your own mind, your own yeah, just yeah, your own self doubt and facing that darkness you get everything you want. You know, the light would be revealed. Uh, but like you said, you got to put in the work. You got to put in the yeah, work. Yeah. And uh, that's that's the thing. Keep working. And um, yeah, so absolutely. You, you have to keep working. And, yeah. and, and you know, I, this, I don't I, my, my wife may find this inappropriate or, what, or whatnot. But, you know, I, I'm going to say it. I'm going to share this this small story with you. And, and you have to forgive me, uh, SD. I, I grew up in Eddie Robinson's household. And he is known or was known as having the gift of gab. And I tell everybody, you can't grow up in Eddie Robinson's household and not- Hey man, <laughs> hey, man. You, you, you and I are not strangers. <laughs> Come on. Okay. And not, not inherit the gift, the gift of gab. But, right. but uh, the, the story is that there was a time and you know, my wife has been corporate America for, you know, my wife was in corporate America, quite honestly, when we were at Howard together. So, you know, she she is, has remained in, in corporate America. But uh, what that does to you is it, it puts you in a line and a mindset of all you have to do is go 
and apply and you can, you too can get a job. You know, I'm educated, obviously, and I could work in corporate America and do probably phenomenal things. And so her mindset was, why don't you, you know, because at, at that time we were experiencing a, a downtime in the entrepreneurial wave. And, and so she was, you know, constant in my ear. But, but when we talk when, and when you talk about the will and the drive that it takes to be successful and to get ultimately where you want to be, and, and it, it, it may sound, it, you know, in, 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 in some, for some people, it can be dangerous uh, because, in, you know, it's like a weapon in the, in the wrong hands. It, it can, in fact, be dangerous. But my will and my drive was so steadfast and so determined. And, and so and because she was in my ear, I said, I'd rather be homeless than to listen to you constantly telling me about go get this job, go go do this, because I at that time was not able to, to generate any any revenue for the household. Right. But but that 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 takes it takes uh, it takes a fortitude that yes. you know not not many people and and, and so I, I, I that's why I say that that's a cautionary tale in a lot of ways because uh, I don't want people to think, okay, just go throw everything away and right. go be homeless until right. you succeed, you right. know, right. because, you know, I, I was fortunate that she was in corporate America, so I could lean on her right. to get us through, but that doesn't work for everybody. So I, I you know, that, that story comes with caution as well. Right. Yeah. I, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, I, I totally get it. So we'll, yeah, that's a great story, but yeah. You have to really uh, dig deep and know what your higher self is telling you. Yes. And, and so you going that route was not based on ego. That was a fire yes. in you. Yeah, that was a fire in you. Just would not let you go the corporate route. So, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, some people don't go that route out of ego, laziness or, or wh wh whatever it is. It's out of ego, but it's not their higher self. So that's what, so I want to, I want to say that any decision you make, uh, you know, make sure it's tapped into your higher self rooted in righteousness and not out of ego. If it's rooted that's in right. ego, it, it, it ain't going to work, man. It ain't going to work. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, now I was fortunate enough to get the beta version of big stakes five. Uh, a, a while ago, man, maybe, maybe four months ago, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. four or five months yeah. ago. Yeah. Now, I'll be, I'll be transparent. <laughs> I play the uh, the space game on my phone, man. Maybe too much, actually, man. I spent too too much time, but it's a way of meditating for me, also. So right, while I'm right. playing, I'm also thinking and strategizing. And I had to tell my wife that I said, you, you think I'm playing this game on my phone? Like it's, it's more than that. It's a way for me to relax. And I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, I'm strategizing. So now I tried to get into certain domino games online. It just didn't do it for me. It didn't mm -hmm. do it for me. Now I got a hold of the beta version of Big Stakes 5. Man, I, I was bought in. You know, I bought in right away when I saw the the uniqueness of it, I was like, okay, this is what this is what the game needed. You know, this is what the game needed. It has a, a poker element, a gambling element to it. And I like the layout. I like the visuals. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's obvious, it's evident that you guys put a lot of work into it and had some really talented people uh, working on this this project. And uh, let me see if I could do a let me see if I could do a split screen, a share screen right here, man. Uh, okay, okay. Let me see. Let's see, there it goes.
So can you still see me? I can see you, yeah. I, okay. I see your screen on, on the Zoom. Okay. So let's see. I guess I, I guess I removed it. Let me see something here. Well, I saw the Big Six Five tab on the web. Uh, on, looked like on your browser. It was on your on your Zoom browser, the same one that. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Let me see. Maybe I'm over. It's my first time doing the share screen. So can you see that screen? Yeah, sure can. Okay. So yeah, guys, uh, people, this is the website. I mean, the graphics is phenomenal. Um, man, it's phenomenal. I've been checking this out. You got the, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah you got the team here. There's my man, Michael Watkins, CEO. So you got a diverse yeah, group here. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 I tell you what, uh, you know, we we talked about the the team earlier, and for example, uh, you know, Chris Leon, for example, he's a young young student, uh, twenty one year old at UCLA, but okay. you know, he's he's been in in the social media space since he was you know almost thirteen, but but you know, I I believe in. Uh, having best in class, you know, in terms of the team. And, you know, the, you've heard the, the same book. If, if you're the smartest person in the room, you've got the wrong team. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, you got a problem. And, yeah, yeah. So if you if you scroll back to if, hit that left button, um, Olivier is the C CTO. Then, you know, he, he's been in, in the space now. Just scroll a little bit more, one more time. Uh, yeah, there you go. So uh, Olivier has been in, in the space now uh, for uh, IT about 20 years, a little over over 20 years. Uh, Microsoft uh, expert, Azure cloud, uh, but you know, and now and now he's at uh, he's at uh, J.P. Morgan, senior level uh, IT exec. But you know. When you when you hear him talk about the all that that goes on behind the scenes to to make an app, you know, and again, this this goes back to 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 create creation, if yes. you will, um, because we play different apps. You know, you you play Spades, you play um, now Big Stakes Five. You probably played other other games as well. What we see as a general public is so tip of the iceberg of what really goes on behind the scenes in terms of all of the infrastructure that made that possible. And I tell you, we would not be anywhere near uh, where we uh, are today without the likes of, of Olivier. And then of course, Neil. Uh, Neil and I have been together now almost 20 years. And you know he's a former NFL agent. Man, that brother knows his stuff. And when you know when you talk about you want somebody in in your foxhole with you to, to go to war you don't get no get no better than 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 neil allen so you know the, the that that's the whole idea is to put together the team you know we don't what we don't show represented here is the legal team for example from uh, intellectual property to corporate uh, corporate law contest rules you know uh, the corporate infrastructure, the accounting, you know, Gary Johnson, CPA and his team. And because one of the things that, that I knew, you know, we, you, you alluded to it before as a, a black led firm, we're going to be and will be constantly under scrutiny like no other. How, where did these people come from? Um, you know, how, how did they do it? And so, so it was critical that I put together a team. And, and again, going back to grandpa's, knowing how to put, it, put the team together, you know? And, and the great thing about our team at 1619 is no one person is trying to be the other person. You know, I'm not trying to be Neil, he's not trying to be me. 
we dare not ever try to be Olivia. And we just don't know how to be Chris, you know, on the social media side. But, but the, the point is, you put that team together that keeps you out of hot water and, and above reproach where, you know, no one can, can say, you know, hey, did they pay their taxes or did they file, you know, this report with the state or do they have the, the appropriate legal uh, disclaimers within the, the game? All these different things that, that it takes that people don't even begin to think about and, you know, I'm fortunate, again, is that communications, you know, and when I was in the Air Force, that was my, I was command and control. And command and control means you, my job was to be in charge of the air war, the entire air war. And so you learn how to see the big picture and communicate where it needs to be communicated so that the mission doesn't lack or fail in any one given area. And so, you know, I, I bring that as leader of, of this team, but still having a team that, you know, keeps my ass out of hot water, no for doubt, sure. No doubt. And that goes back to being self-aware, having self-awareness and knowing I can't do it all by myself, formulating the, 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 the right team, you know, with the, the, the right personalities. Uh, and you mentioned the scrutiny that you knew you would be under and that people that look like us are under when we do something this big, right? Or anytime we mm -hmm. reach out to the public and say, buy into me, I yes. have a product. And so this is why I didn't wanna just jump into talking about Big Sticks Five, right? I wanted to right. dive into, going back into your history to show the people, no, this guy is a real deal, right? Yeah, he has yeah. credibility, he, he, he's, he's to be respected, he knows what he's doing, knows what he's talking about. And he's, a, he's an entrepreneur by blood. Right, it's just not something he decided to jump into one day. So that's yeah, yeah. you're right. That's why we're, we're diving deeper, opposed to just focusing on big stakes five. Right. So yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. So we we, once, we, we sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say we we literally started this process. I mentioned Neil's fiftieth uh, birthday party. That was you know the impetus uh, of what is now big stakes five. What started out as a base domino tournament for a million dollars and it turned into Big Stakes Five. But it took five years, for example, just to get the first patent. Uh, because as you can imagine, we're taking a game, the, the foundation of a game that was invented in the 10th century and going to the US Patent Office saying, we have done something new. And they're like, no, you have not. <laughs> and so it took five years, again, but this goes back to your will and your determination to fight. We went tooth and nail with USPTO before they, and five years later, they finally succumbed and gave us the patent, the first patent. We ultimately got a second patent two years after that. And you know now our IP team is working on even more patents. But my point is, you know, that that goes to you know the the will and, and the process. But I, I like to correct, you know, tell the joke that. We're, we're like the music uh, guys. I, I remember Alexander O'Neill, one of my favorite singers, yes. uh, favorite <laughs> yes. artist. And, and he's like, it took me 20 years to become an overnight sensation, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And the x 5 would be the same way. It took us 12 years to be, you know, hopefully if we are fortunate to, to uh, become an overnight sensation, but yeah, it will have taken 12 years to become an overnight sensation. Right, right. Now, for the people that are not so business savvy or know the jargon, IP team is intellectual property. And yeah, so so I'll, I'll, I'll dive in at another video about intellectual property, how important it is in another video. But I know I know we can get caught up using jargon. It's like, yeah, what? yeah. What's My IP? Apologies. Yeah, internet <laughs> protocol? No, no, no. no. no so I, intellectual property team. And so that's a whole different conversation. But once again, guys, we got CEO Michael Watkins here. He's the CEO of 1619 Gaming Group, coming out with his new project tomorrow that's been in the works for five years, Big Stakes Five. Now, let's dive into that, Mike. How would you explain the uniqueness or the, the, the game, the infrastructure of Big Stakes Five? What is Big Stakes Five? Big Stakes Five 
is a supercharged downer game at its core. It's a supercharged downer game. It's very offensive minded in terms of the approach because unlike uh, the traditional domino game that you may play a number of games where the winner ultimately has to score 150 points total in big stakes five, each hand, each wash, if you will, is its own game. And all you're saying is, on this particular hand or this particular watch, I'm going to score more points than anybody else. And I'll, I'll tell you how, how, how that came to be. When we first started looking at the, the domino tournament that we were going to do in Las Vegas for $1 million, the idea was, OK, how do we make this sexy for TV, right? And so we're, we're, we're playing a couple of games and I'm not scoring a lot. So I'm sitting here looking at basically 15 points. Now there's no, at, at that point, no, no, no have we, uh, well, okay. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me back that up. So the, the first thought was how, how do you keep score? In the traditional game, you use pen and paper to keep score. Right. And you, as you alluded to earlier, you pencil with them. Right. So in big stakes five, you use chips to keep score. And each chip is five points. Everybody has their own color. So you can't just slip some chips on your side and be like, oh no, I scored, you know, no. <laughs> because if your chips didn't come from the appropriate person, you know, okay, you, you know, basically you chip whipping, I guess. Right, right. 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 So, so that was the, the whole emphasis. But then as I'm sitting, we played a few hands and I'm sitting there with just, I think I had 15 points worth of chips. And I'm like, hmm, how am I ever going to catch up? You know, my wife's sitting here. She's got like 40. Neil's got 60. And, you know, maybe my daughter, I don't know who was playing with us, had, you know, maybe 35. I'm like, man, this is going to be hard for me to catch up. So I said, yeah, I'll tell you what. I'm going to take these. All I got is these 15 chip or you know or, or the three each, each chip is worth five points and i'll say i'm gonna put my 15 points that i'm gonna score more points than anybody else on this next hand so stacy's like okay i'll take that she puts up her three chips neil puts up his three chips my daughter puts up her three chips i score more points than anybody you know we play the next hand i score more points I get everybody's three chips. Now I'm plus nine. I'm back in the game. So we're like, whoo, okay, that works, you know? And so when we took that to Vegas, they were like, do you guys know what you have here? And now we really didn't. Right, right. <laughs> but we, right. act, we acted like we did. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, hey, we poker acted face. Like we did. Poker face. Yeah, you better, be, you better <laughs> believe it. We must have something, right? So, so, so what those chips turned into is at home with friends and family, the chips are like Monopoly money. No big deal. You know, you play Monopoly, it's, you know, everybody gets their money and whatnot, just like Monopoly money. But online and in a casino environment, the, that money is real, dollar for dollar, for example. So, so to answer your question, that's what Big Stakes Five is. It's a supercharged domino game that uses chips to keep score and then allows you to risk a given amount of money, uh, you know, whether it's virtual or real, on uh, each hand. And by whatever measure you need to score more points, then you... Uh, you know, that, that's how you, you, you win the game, by scoring more points than, than your opponent. Now, I, I mentioned that how do you make it sexy for TV? Because as you mentioned, you're, you're a space player, right? Well, this is where the five comes in, in terms of big stakes five. 